first day that I saw Byron was February 13th, 1955. And he came to my house with some friends and we were going on a blind date together. And that's how I first met Byron. I thought he was so handsome. When we, it was time to order, he said, let's have a bottle of champagne, which was really a big surprise to me. So that was my first introduction to Byron. So you've been married to him for how long? 55 years, going on 56. It's very hard to pinpoint when was the first day I noticed this, because there was no first day. It was just, I guess, evolving and during a period of time. Okay, Byron, you look so nice. He would meet friends at church, and he'd go right up to somebody and say, Hi, how are you? Uh, who are you? Instead, of, And these are people he knew, but he couldn't remember their names. Okay, now you're perfect. i got to get his hair combed. Doctor came in and we said, Oh, this is Jerry. He just wants to say hello. I didn't introduce him that way. And... Um, Byron looked up at him, he was asking him questions which Byron could not answer. What day is it, or what time is it, or simple questions, really couldn't quite answer. In the beginning, when we found out he had Alzheimer's, he could still get up in the morning, he could still play, play the piano, reading music. He could still eat his breakfast. Again, Alzheimer's is a slow process that does not go down like that. It goes down very slowly. And Alzheimer's is not an easy... It's not an easy disease, but I always said, and I've said this before, I'm not going to get pessimistic about this. I always want to stay optimistic because the only reason I could function 55 years married to this guy over here and going through a polio and pneumonia and heart attacks and of course Alzheimer's. Uh, the only way I could cope with that is because I believe in God and I feel he's walking with me all the time. Every day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And if I go to church in the morning, that uplifts me, gives me strength, gives me courage. And if I didn't have that, I would be in an insane asylum. <laughs> so why do you think uh, it works so well between Byron and Dan? Dan and Byron have a very, very, very unusual relationship. Byron is like Dan's grandfather. Dan has now become a member of our family. And then we're going to go play soccer. In 2008, Byron had um, to go in for a surgery for an angioplast in his leg, and he was in Lawrence Hospital for two weeks. And my daughter Hope was there every single night, but Dan was there every single day. And many nights, Dan went and slept in the hospital. Now, where are you going to find anybody as dedicated like that? It's unbelievable. So, I can't tell you how close they really are. Hey, you look good. You Very look glad good. that we have him at home. He gets a lot of love, and this is so important. And even, and it's hard to stimulate somebody all the time. And Dan's very unusual that he can do it. Byron, that was spectacular! Wow! <laughs> Yowzer and Yowzer and Palser. Close. What about hum? oh, they were good. Humphrey Bogart? Humphrey Bogart. And Errol? Errol? Errol Flint. Wow! Uh, what's your name? Your name is Byron O. Thomas? But Byron. I, I'm happy, I'm not, I'm not angry that this is the way things have turned out because uh, this is the way life goes on and I'm happy that my husband's alive and I'm happy he's surrounded by love, which he gets from the people in our home and there's tons of it from Dan.